It is the riots Wednesday, May 31st edition. Have you noticed more people with BBLs? What do you mean? Brazilian like walking butlers? around. Yeah, just big booties. I haven't really been looking. I mean, you don't you don't <laughs> you don't have to look to see them, buddy. <laughs> they're they're there and you and whether you want to see it or not, it's there. I saw one at the gym yesterday. Uh-huh. At least I assume. But yet again, it's one of those things I feel like is fairly obvious. Yeah. If it wasn't, then that's just incredible work from that guy. I don't know. I keep my eyes above. I tend to, although, as you'll hear, it's funny that we're talking about this, and then the first, and this was not planned, but the first thing you're going to hear in the podcast is us talking about a butt that I saw, <laughs> but in, <laughs> under much different circumstances. A different butt than what, the butt that I saw. Yeah. It uh, was not, mine was not a Brazilian butt lift. I can assure you of that. Yeah, mine. I'm fairly yeah. confident. It's one of those things that I feel like, especially when I was down in Scottsdale, mm -hmm. like a couple, what, this past weekend? I mean, everywhere. I mean, just like, not even just like the BBL look, just like stuff being done. Well, that's Scott, isn't that Scottsdale? It has a reputation for that. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. Yeah. Like fake lips, fake boots, so, fake butts, everything. Since you, since you just went, you're probably more just attuned to it. And so maybe you're. I feel like I'm attuned to it just all the time. You think so? Yeah, I think it's just something that's becoming very common. In my life, especially, you know what the biggest one is? What's that? Girls with fake lips. Well, that, fake yeah, lips it's popular, are right? way popular. Like, I, like, know, and it's crazy because until probably two years ago, I didn't know anybody who had fake lips. Uh -huh. And now I probably know, like, 50 girls, 30 girls, 40 girls that have fake lips. And in the beginning, I couldn't even tell. That's what's wild. I don't even know 40 girls. <laughs> <laughs> Do different you, lifestyle, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Do you... Do you think that then, because it's, it's popular, it's taken off, it's more and more common, more and more attainable, right, to get, yeah. to get work done. Do you Way think more. when you're out in the dating game, is that like something that is a positive for you? Because you, clearly you're saying you can obviously tell. If it's obvious, is that, is that a negative? Oh, no. You don't think so? I think that I've become more, I, I've been more accustomed to the fake lip thing, and I can tell. If they have the fake lips, usually. Sometimes I can't. Mm -hmm. But usually you can tell. But thats I don't even think it's bad if you can't tell. I kind of like them. Oh, yeah? I like thick lips. So. It shows they care about how they look. Yeah, exactly. I but don't what mind. if they care too much? I don't mind that. Well, it's, there's, there's like you got to walk that line of like you don't want to look like super fake. Yeah. I'm not about like the super fake look, but like the lips, the thick lips, I'm for that. Like fake lips, I'm fine with. I have to kind of prefer it. I don't know if I prefer it. I think I kind of do. I'm being frank. I think I kind of prefer. <laughs> well, I think that's, I'm coming that's to why that, people are doing it. I'm coming to that conclusion right now. I like big lips. All right. I'm glad you could admit that. I put that. a stance on that. Would, I think I would. Wait, I might even. You you might go for lip fillers? I just plump them up a little. Yeah? Is that if you had to choose like some cosmetic work to be done, is that what you'd go with? Mm, I'd, probably, I'd probably do like the bo Botox. That's the one that takes away wrinkles, right? Yeah. I, I think probably would do. I think, to. I think that one would probably be the least noticeable because I feel like as a man walking around, I would look wild if I got like lip filler done. Yeah. Like, that would be super obvious, right? I think it would. There's, it not, would there's not a ton of guys that, that probably do that. Yeah, that there's can, no way. I think I would look of. ridiculous if I got lip filler done. And if people could tell, then I would feel ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thinking definitely like Botox, which guys get Botox. Yeah. To like get rid of wrinkles and stuff. That's probably what I would, I would go with. What if, about you? Um, I don't know if this is a surgery that is actually done, but neck shortening. That's a wild answer. My neck is long. You think you got a long neck? I got a big long neck, especially, you know, I got long hair now. So in a way it, it, it I masks really noticed it. that. But I think if you, if I, didn't have long hair to be around my neck. I feel like my neck would look, I'd look like a giraffe. So you're going long neck, huh? I'd like to shorten my neck. I don't know if there's any uh, plastic surgeons shorten that do that. my neck. Yeah. Of all answers. But I think that would benefit me. I was talking about or, things that are pretty normal. You're going with a neck shortening. Neck shortening. Okay, you want more standard? I would do a BBL. And seems like an odd choice. The okay. reason for that is because I've been losing a little bit of weight lately. And as much as I would like for the weight to be coming off of my stomach, which is my problem area to me, it's not, is it's it? not, it's coming off of my butt, which was Never one of does. my best, best areas. One of your best features. Yeah. <laughs> Although for the purposes of our video podcast, that would not serve me 
I mean, I might sit a little higher, maybe. Yeah, maybe you should go neck shortening. But then I just adjust the camera. So, yeah, the neck shortening would probably be better for what we do. I think, yeah, the neck shortening would probably be a good one. Yeah. I think maybe, like, if I if I had to pick something else, maybe, like, restructuring my nose. What's wrong with your nose? Nothing. I just think that I, if I'm going to pick something else, I might yeah. as well make it perfect, I guess. Because I think if I, if I picked anything else, it would look too obvious. Yeah. I don't think the nose needs to be done. I, I'm it might pretty throw fine off with the, the rest nose. of the balance of your face, even yeah. if it's a little long. Hurt too. They have to like break it. Yeah, it sounds. Yeah, the it recovery like from that. Work. The recovery, not good. Botox. I mean, yeah, sure. Line me up. I'm okay go. with it. That's I'm pretty simple to too, right? Yeah, that's why I think so. You could do that. You just do some shots. You just you have to do it over and face. over again, though. Yeah, you just do some shots in your face. I really don't know a whole ton. You about go through like a couple rounds of it. Yeah. For the Botox, at least, but I don't know. It could be worth it. Make me look young for a little bit longer, I guess. Yeah, I guess but other so. Than that. Um, okay, so in the show today, you are going to hear about uh, a butt situation for me that I noticed yesterday. That's coming up right here off the rip in the podcast. We got some other good stuff. And then tomorrow, we're going to do a new segment. Maybe it'll suck, maybe it won't. We're going to call it Choice Champions, where we're going to pick teams of the best things about summer. And then uh, everyone has to decide who has the better team, the better selection of things that we love about summer the better compilation yeah of summer features and you're going to pick between between the two of us we'll be we're drafting summer fantasy teams precisely can't wait and it's going to be a, a grand time we'll see you guys then we'll catch you later you won't hear a show like this anywhere else and that's probably for the best the worst of the riot radio you Isaiah, i want to know how does this still happen in 2023 how do you still get just a full view of somebody's gadonka donk un uh, like just fully exposed? That shouldn't really happen in public. Where are you hanging out? Uh, My the, question. What are you doing outside of work? It sounds a, like you're having an interesting Tuesday. Well, yeah, it wasn't a strip club. It was just I was going to the grocery store, standing in line. The guy ahead of me drops his credit card on the ground and bends over to pick it up, and the entire hind end hanging out. No way. Yeah. Just the whole thing. Just not in. Th- what I want to know is. Was there like a hole in his pants or was it more of like a. <laughs> Don't like say a, hole. Like Don't involve a hole crack. in this. Like no, a plumber's it was, crack. It was, it was plumber's crack, but it was worse. Just uh, egregious? It was just. Were you at Walmart? Is that where you're at? Yeah, maybe it was That Walmart. makes sense. That, that yeah. makes sense. I can imagine something like that happening at Walmart. Not so much like Target or somewhere like that. Target's more of a too Walmart good for that. Field. Yeah. Uh, but I just don't understand how, I don't understand how you don't notice. Like, is that, that that is even a possibility. Maybe you know, maybe you know that your pants are a little loose because he was wearing basketball shorts, maybe the elastic a little stretchy or something. Uh, but then you're probably aware of that, right? And you're trying. You would think. And you're, so you're, we'd be desperately trying to avoid that situation. At least that's to me. To me, I wear my pants pulled up to my rib cage. Yeah, because I, I never like, want this to happen to me. See, I was talking about this with my roommate not too long ago. I feel like just the the air, the fresh yeah. air, yeah. you would be able the to breeze. feel that alone. But some people do not. And the, and you have to think, too, if it happened yesterday to him, uh-huh. it probably is a reoccurring thing. Yeah. It's never like a one-time thing. I think the people that whenever you're walking around and you see like a whole a whole butt cheek, if you see like a whole Well, it's hard to see just crack, one. Yeah, it is. If, if you see a whole plumber's crack, I think that that's something that happens to them regularly. You're probably right. There's just certain people that it just happens to, and certain people like uh, you and I, where we keep our pants adjusted accordingly, because it would be so embarrassing to me. Would you want someone to tell you? Oh, that's tough. It depends on the location, probably. If you were and at who Walmart it was. and it was somebody if you, behind, you. if I, yeah, it, it was somebody you don't know. Would you want them to tell you? If they look like you, then yes. If it's like an attractive female, I just want her to continue on with her day, uh-huh. and I don't want her to tell me that she saw yeah, that. Because that, that, that would be more embarrassing. Would feel if it's more a guy, embarrassing. yeah. If it's another guy who says it to me, yeah, and I'm like, thanks, it's man. It's just bro code. He's looking out. I'm like, whatever. I don't really care that much that you were the one that saw it. But if it's like a, yet again. A cute girl or something. Don't even tell me. Just don't talk to me and just let me continue on with my day without that embarrassment. Yeah. But I think like as, as well, if it's I, yet again, I can I can imagine it happening to certain people mm-hmm. many a times. And you would think maybe like a belt. Have you ever heard? Yeah. Of right. I mean, he, again, he was wearing basketball shorts. Yeah. But you got to tie him tighter or something. 
And between your underwear and your, like, if, if you think your basketball shorts are loose enough that that could happen, then you need underwear, even if you don't normally wear them, like wear them for that situation. <laughs> you know, like you just, you've got to adjust. You have to do something. You got to. And would it be embarrassing for you to like have your hand on the back of your basketball shorts when you bend over to just keep them from falling? Oh, that's tough. That would be goofy looking, but it'd, it'd be, be better. less goofy looking and less attention grabbing than seeing your entire uh, badonkadonk. Or just like close the fit. Yeah, just that's right. You could also work, in, work on that. That's uh, another a option. I mean, maybe it's good news. Maybe it means he's losing weight. It could he's be. He's getting in shape. He's getting in shape, he's so figuring it that's out. a positive, but I don't know. You know, in other times, it would never happen. Yeah. You think if you go back in time, they had like they would always wear suspenders? They would wear something. Maybe, oh, suspenders. Yeah. Back in the day. Maybe th- those were better times. And in other cultures, seeing a forehead would be like seeing. Seeing a bucket. Yeah, crack. that's right. <laughs> Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow. At Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. Congratulations are in order to Al Pacino, the actor. He's 82 years old, and he's expecting a child. He's expecting to have a new baby born here in a month or so. His 29-year-old girlfriend. You said, what now? What was that? Sorry, I missed that. One what, more did, time. what did you not hear? Reverse that back there. Al Pacino. Al Pacino. He's an actor. Actor. You may know him from things like The Godfather. Um... He's also in The Irishman. He's in... Godfather's uh, an old movie. It is an old movie. You ever seen it? I've never even seen it. So right. old. Let's not get sidetracked. You know who he is, Al Pacino. Familiar, 82 yes. 82 years old. 82 years old with it, 82. He is expecting a child, a new baby. Baby? His, his baby. Baby, 82. Uh-huh. That's weird by itself would go on? With his girlfriend. Girlfriend. She's eight months pregnant. Uh, she's 29. She is They're, like a... Sixth of his age. No, my math's so off. <laughs> like a, she's a third of about his age. A, a, little, a little over a third. This of is his what's age. wild. Ready? If they were, if she was one year younger, uh-huh. you could flip their numbers. Like she, if she was twenty eight, she's twenty nine. Yeah. But if she was twenty eight, he is eighty two. They could flip numbers, uh-huh. and they would be the same age. That's wild. That twenty nine <laughs> years old versus eighty two. That is a old. unique situation. See, I think about twenty nine, and for me, like I'm, I'm like twenty five. Yeah. So I feel like that's pretty close in age to me. Like, uh, I could date a 29-year-old. Yeah. Wouldn't be weird. That wouldn't be that, that unusual. If I came on the show and I was dating an 82-year-old, I don't even know what you would say to me. I don't even know how you would look at well, me. Well, it's your business. Yeah, I know it's my I'm business and all, you. but it's just a wild conundrum for me. That would be... I mean, now, what would be really wild is if you had an 82-year-old girlfriend and she was having she was, a baby. And she was pregnant. That... That would be... And that would be an extra twist. Yeah, that really would be. But Al Pacino, it's, it is crazy. Here's another, another great number for you. When this baby turns 18, Al Pacino will be turning 100. Assuming, and I, and I would like to assume this, that he makes it that long, he'll be turning 100 when his child graduates high school. Now, that's crazy. That's crazy to think about. Here's, something, here's a question I have for you, right? Okay. Al Pacino, you think... Uh, you think he's going to be like changing diapers? He's not doing a darn thing. You don't think? He, what do you think he's going to do? Like he doesn't fatherly, do anything. what fatherly duties will he carry out None. in this scenario? I mean, he's going to like be there, but like he can just pay people to do that all yeah. for him. Yeah. Okay. Think about this though. Think about an any eighty-two-year-old guy that happened to be able to have a baby at eighty-two years old. You think any eighty-two-year-old guy? You can can you imagine them doing a lot of diaper changing? No, no chance. Diaper changing. What else do you have to do when you're a dad? Like stay up over. Make you, food. You think, you think Al Pacino is gonna be rocking the baby to sleep and wakes no. up in the middle of the night? He's gonna, oh, waking up hey, and going to get the baby. Hello, bye. <laughs> and good night. You think he's Al Pacino's doing that? I feel like he's no. not. I'd, I'd be surprised. I mean, he's a spry. He's probably, he's probably he's still acting. He's still doing a lot of work. He's still looking good, pretty good, doing pretty well for I eighty-two. Wouldn't say, I wouldn't say he's he's looking, know, looking overly good, good, but but at least he's not had a bunch of work done. That. I mean, compared to so least so his positive. girlfriend. They look wildly different. They do at this point. Wildly different. They do at this point. But 29-year-old Al Pacino. I mean, yeah, 29-year-old Al Pacino might have been a stud back in the day. But they, right now, as they are like 62 years apart or whatever it is, (laughs) 
They look wildly years different. Apart. 53 years apart, whatever it is. They look wildly different. Well, but you know, good for them. Yeah. That's I their mean, thing. It's congratulations. I'm not going to be upset for anybody that's, uh, you know, just going ahead and having a baby. It's wild. Yeah. Especially, but you know what? Yet again, I believe good for you. Whether Al Pacino and his girlfriend are doing it or whether it's a nanny or whatever, I believe the baby will be taken care of. Al Pacino can afford it. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, that baby, yet again, is unlimited money. So. Yeah. So sounds, sounds good to me. Congrats. Nobody does it better. The Riot Radio U. I now pay later is all the rage, right? Uh, even Apple offers, what do they call it? What's their term for it? I know you don't use it. Isn't it buy now, pay later? They, no, they have is a special. Is that what it's called? Apple has a special one where you What's pay in called? installments. I can't remember what it's I'll called. I'll look it up. Yeah, because you, you have an Apple phone. You have this uh, as an option for you that I know you choose to. Uh, to Apple not, pay later. Pay. That's just what they call it? Yeah, Apple p- pay later. Well, that's, that's simple. Yeah. Why didn't I think of that? Uh, but it's, it's all the rage now, right? And so I've got a pizza place here in, uh, New Zealand that is taking buy now, pay later to a new level. They are offering buy now, pay when you're dead. Pay much later. Yeah. Way later. Hopefully anyways. Uh, this place it's called, uh, it's actually called hell pizza. And this sounds like something from the onion, but this is real life. They are offering the option for a few lucky people at this pizza joint to be able to amend their wills to have the payment for the pizza that they order. So you would not actually, the payment for that pizza would not come out until you pass on and your last will and testament is read. And then it'd be like, well, I leave this to my mother, this to my father, this to my family, the rest of my family, and this to the pizza place, 1385. What do you what do you make of that? Well, yet again, I'm not a big fan of the pay later. Yeah, but I mean, this one here, this is a pretty good one. It is right. I think this is a good. I mean, obviously, if you don't have enough money when you die, yeah, it's like it gets passed on to your kids. Uh huh. And if you, ra- I mean, somebody, I mean, I hope I raise my kids well enough they could afford a pizza. But you know, somebody's gonna rack this up. Yeah. Like if you had the opportunity to eat as much pizza as you wanted and then pay just after you died. Uh huh. Then people are going to run well, up the bill. I tell you what I die from. Pizza poisoning. Oh, yeah. From eating too much cheese. Get a little bit too clog thick, I'm my thinking. heart in no time. Yeah, get a little bit too much, too too thick. And their pizza isn't cheap either. Their pizza's pretty expensive. Oh, is it? I'm is 1385 like, a low estimate? I'm, oh, it says 20, 22 and a half. I'm seeing 25 for their gourmet pizza, of course. Hand stretch double, is 27 Ooh. and a half. Um, and so I'm seeing some pretty, nothing's under 20. For yeah. pizza. This isn't oh, Domino's. Okay. No, this is, no, this is good stuff. Well, I mean, I'm intrigued now before anybody gets, uh, too, too upset over this. It is a real thing they're doing. It's not offered to everybody. You can't just walk into this pizza place and be like, I'd like the pay when I'm dead option. Please. But do you need credit. You yeah. show your credit. You statement? have to, you do have to apply for it, but they're doing it as a joke because they say they've been approached by these buy now, pay later companies that want to offer that as an option and they don't think that's right they say in new zealand 10 and a half percent of all loans in new zealand are in collections and so they think people are already abusing the idea of taking out credit cards taking out doing the buy now pay now pay later stuff and so this is as a a joke as mocking that as saying we don't think that's right we're not if you can't pay for the pizza today if, you, if you're in a spot, even though our pizza is more expensive, you're in a spot where you can't afford it today, then you shouldn't be buying it. Yeah, it's not like we're talking about something that's a necessity here. This is pizza we're yeah, talking about. You shouldn't be going into debt to buy pizza. No, you should be able to pay for it. If which, you can't pay for the pizza that you're buying, then you should not be buying it. Which is a thing that any of us should be able, it's one of those say it out loud things. Like if you've got a credit card and you're buying pizza with it, or you're doing buy now, pay later for pizza, then... <laughs> Uh, you are going to debt to buy pizza, but if you say that out loud, it sounds ridiculous. Oh, it sounds super ridiculous. But at the same time, it's like, would it, would it really be that bad, though? I mean, it's it's 20 bucks. Yeah, and then, like, let's say you rack it up. Let's say you eat five pizzas. Yeah. hundred bucks, bucks when you die? Yeah. You'll have a hundred bucks, won't you? Surely. Somebody I know will. Yeah, exactly. If, it's, if I can't cover it. And that's their problem. Like my grandson. Just send him a Venmo request. They'll have a hundred bucks or something, right? Yeah. 
The stories you love with the opinions you hate. The Riot Radio U. What if I told you that I have a simple way for you to get an extra six days off of work every year and uh, almost anybody can do it? You're Sounds in, right? great. I'm Sounds in. great. You want to know what it in. is? All you have to do is take up smoking. It's as simple as that. It gets you an extra six days off? Six days off a year. From being uh, sick or what? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, that's, uh, that's time you have to take off. I mean, that is available to you either way, that sick time. But what you can, but if you take 20 minutes of your workday every day to smoke, that adds up to about six days a year of time that you've spent out smoking instead of at your desk or at whatever doing work. And so it is estimated that for any smoker, they're adding an extra, they're getting an extra six days of paid time off per year from smoking. So let me ask this, because yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure how it works. Uh huh. Do places like have to give like a smoke break? Is that how that works? I don't know if that's a law, but I think it's just, it's understood. You ever been at a place that, can you imagine? I mean, neither of us are smoking. I've never smoked an actual cigarette in my life, but I can't imagine a place telling you you're not allowed to take smoke breaks while you're here anymore. Maybe one day, maybe that's coming in the future since smoking continues to be more and more frowned upon. But at this point, I can't imagine you going to, especially if you're working a desk job where like you just walk outside, like who's going to say something? See, who's going to stop you? So you get like 20 minutes, right? That's yeah, like what for you get? like a whole day, but that's probably, you're probably going out a timer. Like that's, you don't just do 20 minutes. One, not an expert again, never smoked a cigarette. I don't think it takes 20 minutes to smoke one no, cigarette. No, no, no. Uh, but you're also probably smoking more than one per an eight hour work day. So you're going out there a time or two. It adds up to 20 minutes on average. And then it adds up to six days a year on average. What I think is this is what should happen. Yeah. I think if like your workplace gives like smoke breaks, right? Yeah. Cause I think like, if you don't smoke, then you just like, don't get that extra break. That's right. You know what they should get? I've always been bothered by that. They should give a nap break. Oh, but if you want, if you're if you're a smoker, then you just take your smoke break. Yeah. But if you're not a smoker, then you can just take a nap break. You get like a twenty minute nap. Imagine how much better your day would be if you just had a little twenty minute nap. I that feel could change that, your whole day. That you'd be more productive as well. Oh yeah, it's just you'd fair. be refreshed. It you'd, seems fair. You'd be in a better mood. Everybody get along a little better. Like how much would you want a twenty minute nap today? Yeah, I, I mean would that, kill for one. That'd be amazing. Oh, I would kill. for It would one. change my day. It would. Now, the problem is I'd use up my 20-minute nap 10 minutes into the workday. Oh, I would, too. And then I'd have to work 7 hours and 50 minutes but without still, a nap. But I guess, actually, then I'd be half an hour into the workday. It'd be day, so worth it, Because 20 minutes though. paid. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think that if you get, if your company gives smoke breaks, you should get a nap break. I, I, think, think, that, it's, I think it's so That'd fair. be a great way to encourage people to stop smoking, It would too. be because, think about this, too. You're like, do I want to take a nap today? Or do I want to smoke two cigarettes? Yeah. I don't know what they would pick. I don't know. Yeah, you, you know, you'd think you'd think that'd be an incentive, nap. and overall, <laughs> you would think nap. But I bet you after you started smoking, you'd be like, "Yeah, I'll have the nap tomorrow." But today, I, I just really, really need, really need to get a smoke. See, that beats my idea, though. My idea was, why do I not just buy a pack of cigarettes and just go and just pretend? Oh, and just staying outside. Yeah, just kill some time outside. Yeah, just and they'd be eventually to be like they haven't made that brand of cigarettes in twenty years. How are you how are you smoking that? It's like, and then I'd have to come up with an excuse. But you know, because I just keep using the same pack of cigarettes. Oh yeah, for my entire life. But what's stopping me from doing that? Yeah, nothing is. Yeah. If they gave smoke breaks, you just you you just take them, take them. Yeah, I I did used to uh, at previous jobs. A lot of times I would go out if somebody else was smoking, which is probably bad for me because secondhand smoke. Yeah. But I might as well have just been smoking. But I'd go out and hang out and just be like, if they get a break, why not me? If they get a break, I I'll go keep them company. I like that. Hey, I'll wrangle them up. I'll make sure they get back inside here in their twenty minutes. They only get twenty minutes. I'll keep an eye on the whole time. Yeah, here at Radio U, nobody smokes, so there's nobody to do that with. So we can't like conjure up a nap break. Yeah. Unless somebody picks up smoking. Well, I'm gonna pick up. Again, having one pack of cigarettes that I never smoke, but use as an excuse to not work. Perfect. And then I'll start capitalizing on the naps. All right. This is Radio U's Worst of the Riot. Would you rather be hated online and loved in person 
or loved online and hated in person, you can text in at 8772-RADIO-U with your opinion. I do have one here from Tamara who says that she would rather be hated online and loved in person because she says there are some incredibly awful people who are famous and love simply because they're famous that I'm sure are super lonely. So that, you know. Makes sense. Whereas for her, her husband and, and love her and the people who know her love her and she knows they'll have her back no matter what. And that's more important than being loved online. And uh, so that's what she's going with. Yeah, I'm with that, Tom. Tom had a similar answer. He said, loved in person, hated online. Half of the people online are fake anyway, so in reality, they may love you but hate your success. Okay. So, so far, unanimous support for being loved in person, hated online. Which way are you going? I think I'm leaning towards loved in person. Really? Yeah, I think that I flip-flopped. Yeah, I thought before, you were going the other way. I, I did like the loved online thing for the whole, like, yet again— the whole making the money off the content creation thing. Yeah. Be a real easy way to do it. If people uh-huh. just automatically love me, I could just gain a bunch of followers, make a lot of money. But I think I'm more of an in-person person where like I could easily, even if I was hated online, I could easily avoid that. Like I could just get off social media, whatever. Like people would hate me on there, but I would just never see it. Yeah. Um, which is kind of how it is anyway right now. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> but if I, if I can't avoid the people face to face, like everybody that I care about hate me. That's a bad feeling. Yeah. If my mom hated me, ugh, that sounds right. That'd be tough. But I can't really avoid her. Yeah, that, I mean. enough. Yeah. Uh, well, I think you said it, though. You said it a moment ago when you said the people that you know in person right now could hate you and you don't know about it because they have to be polite. Yes, that's true. Like, everybody kind of has to be polite after they know you for a while. You, you aren't just rude to people straight off the rip. Most of us. So, uh, that... In, in combination with a few other things makes me pick, and I'm I'm dead sure about this, that I'd rather be loved online and hated in person. One, being loved online sounds great anyways, right? Doesn't it? I mean, that who sounds, wouldn't? That sounds great. Who wouldn't want to be loved online? That's clear. I mean, but who wouldn't want to be loved in person either? But here's the problem with being hated online. If you're hated online, you're going to be recognized in person. And going by the rules of this game, the people that see you out on the street the people that see you at McDonald's are going to recognize you from online. You're, they're going to be like, that's that guy that I hate. And they're going to spit in your drink. And they're going to say <laughs> nasty stuff to you. They will be rude to you because they feel that they already know you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like there's a lot more leeway for them to be rude to you if they hate you online and then see you out and about versus the opposite. See um, and, and think about this. You're like, uh, like Tamara said, well, I've got a family. I've got friends that uh, that love me and whatever. So they'll have my back even if I hate it online. Well, one that one that can only get you so far. And two, what happens when you're hated online? Death threats, people like coming after your family, saying that like insulting your family. Is that what you want? You want the internet See, insulting your family? But like, you're never gonna get a job though. I don't, I will, I'm loved online. I'm a content creator. Oh, that's fair. That's I don't fair. have to do anything. I like what Dee said, though. Dee said she'd rather be loved in person, but think about how many people that are hated online and still make a ton of money as a digital creator. Yeah, that's different, I could though. still make lots of money as a content creator. I could be like the Paul brothers. Think about how many people hate them that just follow them anyway and just eat up their content. Yeah, but they there's hate a watch it. I feel, I'm, I thought about that, too. I did consider that. But I think there's a difference between hate watching something, hate following somebody, and straight up like actual hate. Like you are somebody who is known online as like being you hated. just universally like there's actually a good. Well, I mean, in this case, who knows what the reason is, but you're hated online and it's not like, oh, yeah, I hate him, but I love him. It's you hate this guy. You hate me. I, I can't That's imagine. Okay, though. That would ruin your life. Yeah, but the I think pe- being people hated hating you in person, too. I think you could get through it. I think yeah, but you, you wouldn't manage. have any friends, though. I think you could manage. You wouldn't do anything. No one would invite you to do anything. But at the same time, it's like, I think I could just stay off. I, I would stay off social media. That would be my big, to, to try to avoid the hate. Because people aren't going to be mean to me in person, like I you think said. They, I think they will. 
Be mean to me in person? I think people throw eggs at you. You tell me that's what, happened, that's what would happen if you were hated in person. Ask somebody. That's what would happen if you were hated no, in person. People don't do you that. You can't do both sides. They're still oh, so, polite. So you're saying the people that hate me online They'd are going to be meaner than people that hate me in person. I view them secretly hating you is what I view. Mm, from afar. What a great question. I, 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 I'm I, serious. I could not be more in the camp of loved online, hated in person. Loved online, hated in person. I think I could thrive. Actually, I think I would thrive in that environment. That's how it is right now for you. Yeah, that's pretty much. <laughs> if podcast awards were ever a thing, this show wouldn't win any. This is the worst of the Ryan podcast. How far into the first date do you know whether or not you want a second date? Simple question. You got a, you got a good answer? For How, me? Yeah. For you, oh, for anybody. Uh, for, easy. You think you have an answer? 8772 Radio U. What's your thoughts, Isaiah? 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Oh, yeah. That's it? I think it takes like 10 minutes. I might know on the car right there. That might be the quickest there. That might be the quickest. So you don't even need a first date. I don't even need, you on a second I need date. a car ride to the location with her. Oh, with, uh, together. Got it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can, I can take a car ride with her. I'll pick her up. You ride up. together? Ride yeah, together? I'll, I'll pick her up. Okay. That's, what, that's, how, that's how I roll. Yeah. Pick her up. Uh -huh. uh, I take her there. And by the time that I get there, a lot of times I'll already know. You already but it's not guaranteed that I'll know by then, but I'll tell you, by 10, 15 minutes into the date, I'll know by then for sure. Yeah. that's uh, That that actually is in line with a new survey I have is here. What they say? Is that what they say? Uh, Accurate? The average American knows within 20 minutes yeah, that, in that's... the first date whether they want a second date or not. I so, agree. In other words... Why are we wasting time with all the? Well, I guess because you're having a good time. Because you want right? to, yeah. Because you want to hang out again. Why? Who even needs a second date when you can just make the first date really so long? The real question is: This is the real question. Okay. Why are our dates so long if we don't want to go on a second date with them? Nah, if we know twenty exactly. minutes in, that's what I'm how getting. How do at. you get out of the date quickly? Like the quickest you can get out of a date. My rule was: I can't go shorter than an hour. Okay. If I leave before an hour, that's just disrespectful. That's almost like I didn't even give you a chance. You yeah. know. But I'll do a full hour, and then if I if we ended at like well, an hour, then that's it. Here's a new question from that then. How often, after you're 20 minutes into the first date, and you haven't, you haven't been won over yet, how often do you get won, won over, over after the 20-minute mark? Low. It feels like that's the odds Low. of that are unlikely. Oh, no chance. Yeah. If in the first 20 minutes I have not already decided that I want to go on a second date with you— there's no way in that last 40 before the hour mark, which uh -huh. is where I will end the date, if yeah. I don't think I'm going to go on a second date, there's no way in that last 40 minutes that you're going to convince me then. So how, how can we use this information going forward at, you know, when you're out in the dating mm, world? You've got an idea? I have an I have a answer. Yeah. You Apply this be, to life. So this, is what you got. so this isn't about whether you are deciding if you're doing a second date or not. Uh -huh. Because everybody puts it in their first perspective, you know? Like, I'm, it's as if I'm the one who's always deciding that we're going to go on a second date when the girl that I go on a date with also has to agree to that. Yeah. And so what you need to focus on is in that first, like, 10 to 20 minutes, you got to be impressive. Okay. you yeah. got to come out of the gates firing. you got to be, you, like, real, that's real, right. real, real comfortable off the rip. The best advice I can give you is in the very beginning of the date— you should not, if you don't make it awkward in the beginning, if you can just flow right into it, your chances of getting a second date are so much higher. If you come in the first date, in the first five minutes, you're super awkward. You don't know how to start a conversation. Right off the rip, she's going to be uncomfortable. You got to come out of the gates ready to roll, make her real comfortable off the rip, and then your likelihood of getting a second date is way higher. Yeah, yeah, I, that's... That's actually a great point. That is, that's exactly what you need to do. Don't save. Like some people, you work up a few conversation topics, some funny stories, some one-liners that, and you might have them in the tank for later on in the oh, day. Oh, don't save them. Fire those all off, off the rip. Oh yeah. And then if you get to the 20 minute point and it seems like she's having a good time, you gotta, you gotta figure out the second part of this is the other thing that I was thinking of is you've got to have, you've got to plan 20 minute dates. Oh, it's for short the first dates. date. The first date's got to be you. That's a why twenty minute date. I did. I did coffee. I I was always a big mm, coffee for the first date guy. guy. And because, uh, like, if you if you go to a typical restaurant, twenty minutes in, you haven't even gotten your food, so you're stuck there. Uh, mm -hmm. you do coffee if it's twenty minutes in, and leave them wanting more. Just say, hey, I gotta go. 
Uh, I got to get I gotta out of go. here. Yeah, I've used up all my jokes. I've got to go. Uh, but second date, right? And then you're good to go. You're golden. You're good from there. Yeah, you need that hook opener. That first sentence, it's got to be real, real smooth. So we've, your first five minutes got to be good. Just from this simple study, this one simple statistic that just came out, we've optimized so many dating lives just right here. Yeah, you just got to be good at it in the beginning. And if you're awkward in the beginning, that's why you're not getting second dates. I'm telling you right now, if you pick up the girl or meet her and you're giving her like a weird hug or a handshake or doing something re- weird off the rip, yeah. I'm telling you right there, you're getting you're getting the X off the rip. <laughs> you got to be able to open it up and, and give them something good off the rip. Handshake. Yo, you handshake can't get, to begin the date. Yeah, if you're if you're, you're late with a handshake, yet again. Don't think that's to gonna now. end well for you're you. You're getting next. If you like that video, there's a ton more. Go check out our past videos and subscribe so you don't miss what we do next.